Hello everybody from a very, very soggy Cumbria. Now many of you may know or may or may not know that I'm about three miles from Cockermouth here, here, here in Cumbria and Cockermouth is about three miles that way upstream and you probably can't see it but I'll try and see if we can get it in the background. If you can see water back there that's our local river, the River Derwent. The River Cocker runs into that at Cockermouth and we're under flood conditions at the moment and uh, it's getting quite serious. The rain stopped yesterday evening um, and we were about an inch short of Storm Desmond levels but it's raining now and it has been most of the night. I fear, I fear the worst for Cockermouth. I'll just make it clear, I'm okay here. Where I am here on the allotments is unfloodable but the river is literally just over there I could throw a stone and it would land in it and I live up on the hill so I'm okay where I am now and we're safe but it's the infrastructure of the local area that can get affected I mean we've got a bridge just down through the village there a great big old stone bridge and that was closed for about three months in storm Desmond because it got it got battered by the rain and the floods so we're just sort of holding our breath and waiting to see what happens. Some businesses and some houses did get flooded in Cockermouth last night, but mostly the storm defence is held. If I get a chance later, if I can get near to the bridge later, I don't know what restrictions are in place down there. I'll go and see if I can just take a little bit of footage just to show you what it's like here local on my doorstep. But anyway, today I'm sowing seeds uh, for November. Now, I have some lettuces outside, you can see we've been eating those. I will probably get another picking, maybe two, of these before they're finished. That one's gone to seed there. But certainly one more picking anyway. And here in the polytunnel we've got lettuces coming along which back those up. We've also got a mix of the Asian greens in the back there. We can use those as salads or as stir fries to go mixed. And I've put a few lettuces down here as well. Up top on the hanging shelf, I've got some more lettuces that I so, um, potted on the other day. And we've got some more seedlings on here. These were all sown at the start of last month. Uh, this really vigorous one at the end is a more broccoli rabe. But there's a good mix in there of stuff to be potted on. But I'm going to continue that theme and carry on sowing some more lettuce. So I want to keep lettuces coming all winter if I can and of course at this time of year we are struggling for light, that's the main problem. Along with the, the, the lack of apparent heat, we're suffering from a lack of light, we get shorter days. So I'll keep sowing as, as off, little and often and what grows grows basically. Some of this won't grow, some of it will, and then we'll just continue to use it, keep planting it out. Now, my theory is with these, even with a short amount of light and with very little growing time, so to speak, with, with the light, that the plants, they're not gonna grow as you would expect the lettuce to grow. When I've cleared a crop over the back there, in a couple of months, most of that packed soil will be gone. I will fill that with lettuce. Literally, probably 50, 60 plants, probably from this sowing. And what that will do over winter, going, you know, very, very slow growth, you might get three, four leaves maximum before next spring. But if you multiply that by 60 plants, that's a lot of salad stuff. And if we get a warm spell in the middle of winter, you'll get an extra couple of leaves, which is an extra couple of weeks harvest. So it's worth doing. It's not perfect gardening. It's not fantastic gardening, but it's getting a harvest out of the ground where you thought you might not. Yeah, I'm growing on the cover, of course. Uh, you could grow outside, put a cloche over it, then you're exactly the same as this, because all this is in here is just a big cloche. It's as simple as that. So you can grow lettuce over the winter. And there are varieties that are more tolerant to cold, like this one here, this red Grenoble, and the other one I grew, which is the, the Rouge de Eva. Um, they're really good winter varieties. And they're the only two I'm sowing. I might add 
a winter density where I can find the seed. It's probably in another jacket pocket. But I'm going to take these home now and put them on the windowsill. At home and the kitchen, I've got a very narrow propagator and um, I'll pop a lid on them and keep an eye on them on the propagator. It's just a gentle heat. It's not a thermostat controlled one. It's just a gentle bottom heat. Um, and that should get them going and then I can pot them on and grow them on down here in the in the tunnel. If they grow, they grow. If they don't, then I'll just compost it. It's nothing wasted. But I'll do everything I possibly can to try and grow more, more produce and to keep the gaps in this polytunnel down to a minimum through winter as, as much as possible. It's not always possible. If you get a harsh winter, these are just not going to grow. But if we get a nice patch through there, then it's enough to give them a spurt. And even when the weather turns cold, they'll hold for a bit before they eventually die and you can get a harvest. So well worth doing. <laughs> Next up for sowing are these Aquadulce Claudia broad bean. It's, um, you'll have seen many people sowing these already this year, no doubt. And I'm fairly late doing it, but you can sow these all the way into the middle of November. So if you haven't sown them, get on with it really. What are you waiting for? <laughs> I mean, I could talk, as I say, I'm quite late. And I'm just gonna pinch them between me like this so that they flap the fingers and then just pop them in. That's simply so you, if you put them in flat, water could sit on the top and they can rot. Put them in on the side, then the water will run off. So that's the best way to sow any of your bean seeds really, always sow them on their edge. And pumpkins and squashes and cucumbers, all those, all those sort of flat seeds, always sow them on their edge. So I'm sowing these into, these, these, uh, these are fabulous trays, these rigid trays. These are from um, a company called Containerwise and they're making these polypropylene trays super strong and rigid they've revolutionized seed sowing and potted on for me these this year um, i just love them simply because that they're, they're incredibly rigid and strong and this tray is their um what they've labeled their 28 dan tray you can see them on their website and they're just slightly bigger these cells there's another popular tray around at the minute, also from Container Wise, being sold by Patch Potatoes. Uh, they used to use these for for chitting their potatoes, basically. And um, that's their 15 cell tray. And these cells are just slightly bigger. I don't know if you can see that. They're just slightly bigger in size, this tray is. Slightly more generous than that one. There we go, so there's 28 sown. I don't have a lot of luck with broad beans, but I'm going to carry on and try and grow them. So I've done half a bag there, so they're from Grow Seed. Uh, I've done half a bag, and I'll do the other half in spring and see what we get. <laughs> I'm not giving up on them. It's the same as with Chinese cabbage. <laughs> some things you fail at and some things you're really good at. And the last thing I'm sowing today is a baby leaves tray basically now this is from premier seeds and it's a lettuce gourmet loose leaf salad mix it's exactly what i want and this tray will go up home and sit on my greenhouse bench now i did one a month ago it was a slightly different mix it was a mesclum mixed and the germination on that was poor very poor there is some growing in it but don't think it's going to be that good to be honest but I'll let them grow on and let's see what happens same as I will with this one I'm going to sow the whole packet in here it's about 1500 seeds I'll just this has already been soaked this uh, compost so I shall just uh, cover it with dry compost take it up home put it on the bench in the greenhouse and that's the last thing I'm sowing personally this month there'll be one or two other things uh, I've got some winter density lettuce, I will sow some rocky. Um, what I will do is I'll put a list of everything you can sow that I think you can get away with sowing now 
in the description of this video just underneath um, I'm not doing any more because you've seen I've got hundreds of seedlings all my plants are in um, and if I need any more I'll just sow a couple more or something but I'm pretty much stacked up now and stocked up ready for the winter but I will keep on sowing especially the salad leaves they're, they're important if you haven't done it you can also get your garlic in now as well um, still not too late for that you get them in and they'll start to grow grow roots slowly and might be a while before you see them coming up mine haven't come up yet and they've been in the ground for a wee while but what they are doing is they're growing roots and they're growing underneath the ground now and eventually when the cold weather hits that will split the cloves to give you the proper garlic next year so it's it's in there and doing its job that's the main thing right so just for context that's my plot there you can see the large polytunnel and the small one and if I spin you around, this is now looking down to the bottom of the site. These are the last plots here. And through the trees, and I will zoom in so you can see it, is our river. Now, normally, at the bottom of this plot, there's a pathway on the other side of the fence. And then the normally, it drops down about 15 foot to the river's edge. And the river is about 40, maybe 50 foot wide there. And uh, normally you can't see the river through those trees. And the tree that you can see in the river is probably 30 foot on the, on the, on the other side of the bank, 30 foot from the edge. You can see what it's like there. I'll go down to the bridge now and see if they'll let me have a look down there. So this is the River Derwent. It's in flood at the minute. And you can see just down here where this first bit of torrent is and these trees down here is the edge of the river normally going all the way over to there but obviously we're in quite a terrific amount of flood down here at the moment in Storm Desmond we actually had a, a van floating down here it's settled about halfway between here and that solitary tree up there just settled in the middle of the river no one knew it was there until the floods went away so we're looking just downstream now and just over there where the end of that hedgerow is on the left opposite there on the opposite side of the bank is where our allotments is just over there so <laughs> it's fairly flooded it's got a long way to go before it floods the allotments it will probably flood half the county before my allotments but yeah this is the state of it just waiting for the traffic to clear and we'll just walk along this side thank you so yeah it's pretty much Quite bad and this is roughly where the bank side was there all people stopping to have a look at the at the water <laughs> there we go I think that tree trunk is the edge of the river normal over there as well yeah so it's pretty tremendous in a minute and it has stopped raining now, but there is more forecast. And the trouble is, with the fells being so wet at the moment, anything that falls upstream from here, up towards Keswick, Derwent Water, over towards Bassenthwaite Lake, it all comes through here eventually. And it's just going straight off the fells, straight into the river. And that's always been the issue here. It's not so much the rain on the day, it's the rain on wet fells. So that's it for this one. Just a few sowings this month uh, because I've got all the seedlings I need and mostly planted up what I need as well. But um, yeah, I'll come and see if I can get some footage of the river now. But for now, please stay safe, everyone. Look after yourselves. I'll see you all very, very soon. Tarano.